Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. It's Sinead here in London. And I am on the hunt for the creepiest and most haunted houses in London. Today, we're starting our tour in Hackney, but it's going to take us all the way up to North London, where we're going to make our way towards Enfield. And then we're heading back into West London to one of the most famous and the most haunted house in the entire of London. Join me on a spooky adventure. It's back, it's Halloween, I'm ready to go. I am so excited to bring you through some of the most terrifying stories in London's history. Now, I'm in North London. It's the furthest north I've ever come in London. And this house, ladies and gents, although residential now, and this very quiet council, semi-detached house here in Enfield, was the site of one of Britain's best well-known ghost stories. The Enfield polter poltergeist gripped the nation in the 1970s when two young girls were actually subjected to horrific poltergeist activity and encounters with a poltergeist in there. So poltergeist by definition is actually described as a mischievous ghost or mischievous spirit. And it's no surprise then the direct translation from German is knocking ghosts. And it all began on the 31st, 1977. And the story centers around the Hodginson family, particularly the 11 year old daughter, Janet. Now, when the family had moved in here, they had started to experience that particular night knocking sounds on the wall and movement of their chest of drawers was moving by itself. Now their mother came into the room and assumed that they were actually, well, being mischievous themselves. So she pushed the chest of drawers back to the wall. And when she did, she noticed that it came out again and moved of its own accord two or three times. Now, immediately she was quite terrified. So she headed next door into this grey house to her barber well, to her neighbor who was quite a burly man so he feared nothing and he worked in the construction industry and he himself came inside to investigate and he could not explain for the noises that were banging through the walls so then they called the police and when the police arrived one female police officer on duty actually was on record as saying she herself saw a chair mysteriously move of its own accord in the living room so this activity escalated to the point where there were stories of Janet being levitated and I suppose the truly pivotal moment and the reason the Enfield haunting became such a sensation was when many of the paranormal events were actually captured on film. One particular image is of Janet mid-air in a seemingly impossible leap. But more sinister events started to happen. When items were regularly thrown across the room, Janet was seen in this front window by a lollipop lady who was actually assisting children at the school directly behind me here. And she saw her levitating in a horizontal position, ladies and gents, over and back across that window, an impossible move. So Janet was psychiatrically evaluated and to be fair, the psychiatrist, Actually, um, well, when her psychiatric evaluation came back, it said that she was of sound mental health. But the creepiest part was when Janet started to make these very sinister noises and started to use a voice that wasn't of her own. And many actual personalities came through, but I suppose one of the more chilling was of a man named Bill at the age of 72. Now, Bill accurately described, and they have this, they say it's the first recording of a paranormal entity on, on well, voice recorder. And through the medium of Janet, he, he accurately portrayed exactly how he died in that house. He was the former resident and he was 72 years of age and his voice is quite creepy, was coming through Janet. And he basically said that he had died in a chair downstairs in this house of a hemorrhage. I want you to tell me whether you remember what happened to you when you died. Just before you died and just after you died. I had a 
language and I fell asleep and I died in a chair in a corner downstairs. Now later on, Bill's son was interviewed and he corroborated the story and said that's exactly how his father died. Now for years people suspected it was some sort of a hoax but the truth is it was the inspiration for the movie The Conjuring 2. So Hollywood called then and made that blockbuster movie about the Hodgson girls. Now Peggy, her mother, had always blamed Janet for these supernatural activities that were taking place in the house and she herself well, gave the instruction for her daughter to be put into a children's home because when Janet suspiciously wasn't in the house, there didn't seem to be any activity. So one time when they returned with Janet, she was interviewed there on a BBC documentary. They couldn't find space for her in a children's home. Her mother seemed to be very disappointed, so the young girl was traumatized for life. And she left home at the tender age of 16 and married but it has lived with her to, the, to this day. Now she hasn't spoken an awful lot about it, but this Enfield poltergeist, one of the most terrifying incidents and one of the biggest news stories in this country in the 1970s. Paranormal or real or true? That's North London, ladies and gents, and that is 284 Green Street. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sutton House and Breakers Yard. Said to be one of the most haunted places in Hackney in East London. The stunning Tudor house is located here in the heart of Hackney. It was built in 1535 by a courtier of Henry VIII. His name was Ralph Sadler. Now, since it was built, it has been home to French Huguenot silk weavers. It has been home to schoolmistresses, clergy and merchants. And the house had fallen into disrepair in the 1990s, but was taken over of the National Trust. Now, dogs can be heard wailing from here in the middle of the night. Many locals have reported hearing them barking and wailing. Those dogs are said to be the dogs of a wool merchant called John Mackle, who lived here from 1550 to 1558. Now, when, apparently when dogs are brought here to the house today, they become rigid and transfixed by something that they see on the stairs, something that's not visible to the naked eye. Now, it was also featured on the TV show uh, Ghost Hunters, where one celebrity by the name of Lee Ryan, he was a member of the band Blue, he was absolutely terrified out of his wits when a table began to levitate inside this house. Now, one previous manager of the house was awoken at 3 a.m. one night in the morning to the sound of very loud classical music. And when she went in search of the source of the sound of this music, she headed down to what was a living room where there was a harpsichord inside. And when she turned the key on the door, it was so loud that the minute she turned the key on the door, however, the music ceased. So um, one other very famous story is of the Grey Lady, who can be sp spotted and seen through the windows here at night time, haunting through the grounds. Now that Grey Lady, is usually seen in a blue dress in the nursery, ladies and gents. And the old nursery is where the Grey Lady appears. She's said to be waiting for her, her two children. Uh, she herself had died in childbirth and so did both the, her twins. They died in infancy. But it doesn't stop her from actually coming here to try to find her dead babies. Now, the creepy atmosphere around here is quite I don't know, you can feel a vibe or energy around here. There's no doubt about that. Now, legend also has it that when an archaeology student stayed here in the house in the 1990s, he woke in the dead of night to find this grey lady standing over his bed and shaking the bed violently, as if to say, get out of my bed. Now, the white lady as well, the ghost of a white lady is said to be Frances, the wife of John Mackle, the younger, and she was the lady actually who is said to have died in childbirth. So there's been so many reports of drops in temperature in this house, banging, unexplained banging and levitating objects. It is said to be, as I said, one of the most terrifying places to visit in London. Now, this is the Platinum Garden, this creepy little 
caravan is decked out in quite the most, I don't know, haunted of ways, if you like. The decor seems quite eerie and creepy for a small living space. But it's now run by the National Trust, ladies and gents. And people have experienced, when walking through the building, people, somebody tapping their shoulder and the unexplained noises and the bangings. Is it haunted? Is it another paranormal phenomenon in London? And this is the famous Sutton House in Breaker's Yard. Let's have a little look at the front, give us a little bit more history. The oldest house in Hackney. It's absolutely an eerie atmosphere here, folks. There's no doubt in my mind. And what it says here is Sutton House, the building was given to the National Trust by W.A. Roberts in memory of his brothers Norman Cairns, Roberts' captain, 2nd Battalion Hampshire Regiment, who died the 20th of June, 1917. So that is without a question or doubt the creepiest most terrifying home in East London it's in the, through these windows where the dogs can be heard barking at night and wailing and the grey and the white lady one lady at one of those ladies wearing a blue dress can be seen her spectral sights can be seen through the windows by the residents and the locals here in Hackney and this is Breaker's Yard, right around the back of the house, ladies and gents. It's a wonderful little community garden now. And there's a potting shed, an herb garden around the area. That looks quite ominous and creepy too, doesn't it? In the background. So you can tour this. It costs about £9. I run by the National Trust. But apparently, which to my disappointment after coming down here, only open certain days of the week. And they are open Fridays and Sundays. Ooh, that made me jump. The schoolyard in the back. Now, next on my list for today, ladies and gents, I've traveled to Mile End, and I've brought you to see this rather ominous building known as the Ragged School Museum. Now we're in the East End and it was no surprise that in Victorian London, the East End was one of the worst third world slums known to humanity. Crime was rife, rape, murder, sexual crime, but also poverty and disease was rampant. And the poverty on the streets affected thousands and thousands of children. A lot of children were abandoned by parents who couldn't afford to feed them living in pickpocketing gangs all over the East End. And one chap by the name of Dr. Bernardo, he came here from Ireland in 1866. And when he arrived, he was greeted by these streets of poverty stricken children. In 1867, he opened up his first school. And this is one of the largest. He converted three warehouses into schools for impoverished kids, giving them an opportunity for an education a roof over their head and food. Now, it, this building in particular is renowned for being one of the most haunted in schools in Britain. According to ghost hunters who have regularly uh, used the site, they say it's the most haunted building they have ever encountered. Because whilst inside these buildings, in the classrooms, the children, uh, the conditions were horrendous and treatment of these children was said to be incredibly harsh. And to this day, it's the spirits of those children who are said to actually haunt this building. So countless strange occurrences have happened over the years. They've been reported by visitors and staff alike of poltergeist activity, dark shadowed figures, spotted disembodied voices and even full apparitions. The sounds of laughing and crying children can be heard coming from empty rooms in here and running footsteps and banging doors. Now it does certainly look quite creepy and there are guided tours available inside there. The basement is said to be the most haunted however by a dark lonely figure and balls of light appear in darkened rooms on regular basis. So it wouldn't be surprising considered the tortured souls of these children 
are still haunting the building of Dr. Bernardo's Ragged School Museum here in Mile End in the East End of London. Okay guys, here we are with this amazing view of Buckingham Palace built in 1702 by the Duke of Buckingham. However, it wasn't always Buckingham, well it started out as Buckingham House, but on this site was also the site of a monastery. An enchained monk is said to haunt the rear terrace where a monastery once stood. But it's also said to be haunted by the private secretary of King Edward VII by the name of Major John Gwynne. He is also said to have stayed in the royal residence and whilst there he went through a very public and scandalous divorce which of course was a huge scandal in royal society at the time. Uh, he is said to have shot himself in the bedroom and to this day Rob you told me that he's that day he shot himself was Christmas, Christmas day, day right? Yeah, yeah so Christmas day. Every year on Christmas day they hear a phantom gunshot in Buckingham Palace. And I think the Queen had said to have reported that reputedly have heard of several ghosts in the palace as well. Uh, most of the palaces are said to be haunted, including Sandringham. You know about the Hampton Court Palace, folks. Check out our video on that. Uh, the Hampton Court Palace ghost, Tower of London is a palace. And they also say Anmere Hall, which is the royal residence now of the Prince and Princess of Wales. Prince William, of course, and Catherine Middleton. Okay, guys, so we've made it here to Barclay Square, which I had mispronounced in my previous Mayfair video. And we do this area in much more in depth in the Mayfair video. So check that out, you guys. And I wanna show you first, just to give you a hint of what's ahead of us. Now this is Annabelle's, the private members only club. There's a 4,000 people strong waiting list to get inside the door here. Very strict dress code, um, very famous members only club. You will have seen that in my Mayfair video. It was stunningly done. And I'll be coming back here for Christmas videos, which will be starting very shortly. But the reason we're here is this terrifying place. We're heading down here to the former home of the Prime Minister, George Canning. This is 50 Barclay Square, said to be the most haunted place in London. In fact, the legends of 50 Barclay Square are numerous. And we'll start with the first one. The most persistent is that it was haunted by something so dreadful that it could frighten people to death. So this is the former home of George Canning and the most haunted place is said to be the attic right at the top of the building. So the story refers to a maid. She's instructed to open up the unused haunted room and to get it ready. But she goes completely mad as a result of something she has seen in there. The apparition was said to have been almost like a sea life creature with tentacles that came at her and she died not long after in the hospital of complete and utter shock going to her grave without ever explaining to anyone what she saw inside the building. We're going to go all the way back to 1789 and this story centers around a young little girl that lived in her and her name was Adeline who was terrorized by her uncle, terrorized with physical and sexual abuse she is said to have thrown herself from um, the top floor and impaled herself on the railings below uh, to escape the unwanted advances of her uncle. Now, every now and then, apparently the apparition of this girl appearing in the window and disappearing happens quite frequently. Now, it's also suggested that a child was murdered by her nanny inside this building. And when George Canning, the Prime Minister, lived here, it is said he kept a journal of haunted experiences, including banging noises and sounds of movements in the house. That will take us then to the 1850s and a gentleman by the name of Thomas Moore, a jilted lover and the inspiration for one of the greatest characters in Charles Dickens' books, Great Expectations, Miss Havisham. Now, in Great Expectations, Miss Havisham is a woman abandoned at her wedding and she lives out the rest of her life in an empty house trying to preserve her root youth and innocence while progressing into insanity. Now, direct links have never been made specifically between Thomas Myers and Miss Havisham. However, um, he did live at Berkeley Square whilst this book was being written by Charles Dickens. Now, Thomas Myers, again, the same story, lived in the building 
on his own as a recluse after being jilted in the at the altar by his lover he is said to have descended into horrendous periods of insanity and the only time he was ever seen the, the building went into serious disrepair which became very obvious in the area of course amongst the elite houses here and the beautiful homes um, the only time he was seen was when he opened the door to let his staff in who had taken care of him and he took to as sleeping always during the day and only appearing at night time by candlelight but some suggest he took part in the dark arts in the basement of the building and they believe that these dark arts had awoken the sea-like creature that was to become the main vision inside the building for years later okay so the story then uh, comes to a chap called robert warboys in the 1850s apparently he died after his shock of shock after his experience inside 50 barclay square that night that led to his death he had requested to be left alone and he said he would ring a bell once if he expected any activity but he would ring the bell twice if he needed any help so the bell rang twice and it was reputed he was found dead in the building in the bed in the attic with a terrifying look of shock on his face now another chap called lord george litterton um, and his drinking buddies they stayed in the attic but he saw he said a figure in the darkness in the middle of the night and he reached for his gun he shot his gun and swore he saw this figure drop to the floor in front of him but no evidence corroborated that story the following morning he is said to have died himself by taking his own life four years later okay folks so that's another one wrapped hope you enjoyed this one ladies and gents and if you did please don't forget to hit that subscribe button like and share it truly does help us and help the channel thanks for watching Sinead here with free tours by foot